This is Stars and Scopes with your friend Uma. Updated every new and full moon with guidance based on planetary transits in the current sky and extra support from tarot. For accuracy, take a look at your rising sign first if you know it, and do feel free to listen to your sun, moon and rising if you'd like the full picture. If you're interested in your birth chart, check out the readings page at umaruby.com. And if you'd like to support the work, head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and you can buy me a coffee. Finally, if you're a visual learner, look up Uma Ruby Tarot on YouTube and you can watch and learn. Okay, let's take a look. Hello Sagittarius and Sagittarius Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the new moon in Cancer happening on the 29th of June at 12.52pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So that's the afternoon. So obviously, manifestation around the new moon anytime is fine. If you wanted the visceral experience, I would suggest you do it the night before in the darkness on the 28th. That's a really great time to sit in the in the dark of the night sky and to call in, to wish, to write down what you wish for and to say a little prayer for it. You can also do it at lunchtime the next day. It's completely fine. <laughs> or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then do it at night. Anyway, you know what I mean. So, Cancer, for you, new moons, great time to ask for things, to really, the moon is couldn't be happier than in Cancer. That's really the honest truth. And I think after the hectic, crazy events of the last full moon in Sagittarius, which I'm sure you felt quite profoundly, Sag, I don't know, I'm a Pisces, but... I was sidewinded by this full moon. It almost felt like an eclipse in a lot of ways, just the emotional shifts that were coming out and the different things that were falling away and things that we had lost. And it was quite remarkable and quite a lot to deal with. There was a lot moving around that particular moon. I know that the tide was like sucked out so far that you couldn't even see it. Like it was wild, just the physical reality of this particular moon. So for you in the first house, that sort of letting go, that release of, of what it is that you need to expunge from your soul purpose, that would have been quite big. So a Cancer New Moon is the best antithesis. It's like a band-aid for that. It's a soothing ointment. It's a time to come back in and recoup and relax and, and re-emerge, as it were. We can come back to come back to earth, come back to reality and ask for the things that we wish for from the heart space. Cancer is all about love. So Cancer for you rules the eighth house, which talks all about rebirth and soul contracts and the ways that we are, our souls merge with others. So <laughs> quite hectic stuff. But this, remember, this is a new moon, so you've got control over this one. You can call in what it is that you need. I would suggest that there might be something to do with those bonds, with the, the ways that your experience is wrapped up with other people, that there is things that you could ask for in those ways. If it's a loved one that's no longer here with us, then it can you can call in the goodbye. If it's a partner that you're in a very intense exchange with, then you can call, call in that leveling out and that sort of emotional exchange. The Two of Cups is the card that lines up with seven degrees of cancer. That's where the sun and the moon will be exactly conjunct, forming that new moon. So the Two of Cups is medicinal. It's a healing card. It's It does talk about soul bonds, soul contracts, and it does talk about that beautiful intermingling of two energies. I think here, there's you here, Sag, the fire, with the water of cancer, which is really lovely too. So think about that. Think about the the intensity sometimes of these emotions around this particular house. The eighth is very deep. It, it does talk about rebirth, regeneration, death and, and sex and kids. You know, it, it's wild. But we can work with this. And when we bring love into the situation, when we, when we work at it with love, that's where we can see some real activity and some real temperance in a way. So I think for you, it would be a really great moment 
to call in some emotional understanding, some empathy and some love in these parts of your life. If you are suffering from grief, then call in that, that care, you know, that care that you need. If you're, if you're struggling with a rental property or if you're you know, having to pay a tax bill as well, that can be sort of it's, the way that we're beholden to other energies is really what it is. So call in whatever it is that you need for empathy in that space for a bit of love and care. This is the time to call that in. There is a, <clears throat> again, a difficult aspect in the sky. It's all the planets are all bunched up into one area at the moment. So there's going to be some right angles happening here, there and everywhere. This time it's with Jupiter. Jupiter's our auntie. She's fine. She's, you know, expansive and optimistic and, and generous in that way. And she's sitting at seven degrees in Aries. And that's the card for that. It's the two of wands. So Aries for you rules your fifth house, which is your creative zone, your sort of uh, pleasure zone. You know, it's sort of everything, everything, almost the antithesis of almost the antithesis of the eighth house, but the same, it's same, same, but different. So if we look at the two of cups again, this is the fifth house, this fire, this, you know, it's heart, heart led, but with a drive, with a passion, with a charm and a, and a, and an optimism. And the eighth house is much more water bound. It is, it is emotional. So this two of wands brings us back to that creative spark that's been bur burning inside of you. Maybe there's been an art project that you've been wanting, that you've been planning and that you've been wanting to set forward and get. Maybe there's been someone super cute in your periphery that you've been wanting to like go on a date with that that's been sort of in your consciousness and that sort of Jupiter, that optimism is reminding you that as you go through these incredibly deep, beautiful eighth house emotions, and as you really move through and work with that energy and say your goodbyes or say your hellos again, if it's, you know, grief is cyclical, it goes around. Whatever this is, whatever you're calling in, in that heart space, Jupiter is there going, yes, and remember the fun and the joy and the sex and the creativity and the pleasure of life as well. So let's, it's rather than, rather than conflicting energy, it's more of a reminder, I think, and maybe a salving point as well. If there's some difficult things that come up for you in the eighth house new moon, if there's some if there's some some stuff that you're finding difficult to cope with, then remember that Jupiter Jupiter is there in Aries, egging you on and supporting you in a lot of ways to come back to Earth, come back to the pleasure zone. So that's the astrology. So I'm going to leave these tarot cards on the table because I'm actually going to use them in our reading now. So there's some more astrology going on, but let's face it, I'm, yeah, there's so much happening at the minute that we might just really focus in on this Cancer New Moon, I think, and really work with it, really call in some emotional uh, understanding and some compassion. I think that would be really great for everyone right now, especially you, Sagittarius. What a whirlwind. But Spirit, what can you tell me that Sagittarius needs to hear? What other messages? Can we find to support this new moon manifestation, this heart space? Okay, so I have the magician. Number one, the first character that the fool meets on their fool's journey. And then the knight of cups. One more please, spirit. And the ace of cups. Okay. So if we think about the fool's journey, if we think about the position of the fool is the card number zero. A great teacher of mine calls it the cosmic egg. It's the beginning and the end of the major secrets of the tarot. Well, it all starts with the fool. The fool sets off and the fool completes the, the journey as well. The first character that the fool comes across is the magician who is incredibly charming and there's something about the majesty of the magician that they can move mountains, they can work with the energies of the earth, they can work with the fire, the water, the air, the earth. They can bring it all together and they can create magic. 
there's something about this that's in this space for you. There's something that you're coming across. There's a, a new way of looking at things. Perhaps there's something that's quite beguiling. You can't quite figure out how this person does that or, or I wish that I knew what, how does that work? How do we move with this? There's, some, there's, there's, a, there's a spark here. There's a really lovely spark. And be, be mindful because sometimes the magician can be a bit manipulative. So that's always something to keep in mind because the magician is a bit of a showman. But there is... A, an, uh, an optimism here and maybe to do with this fifth house stuff with this sort of creativity maybe you're in company with someone who is a, a master at what they do and their work just you know floors you maybe it could be you know a music that you've heard or something like that you know any any of these scenarios will fit but there's definitely an energy that you're going to come in if you're not already that you're going to come into contact with and it's really going to floor you with how majestic and, and marvellous it is and will ignite some of that fifth house stuff. It will remind us of the Jupiter, the expansion, the positivity, the optimism as we work with and really contemplate and call in some of this beautiful eighth house healing. There's going to be a message that comes to you. There's, you, there's a message that's on the way to you, Sag. It's really heartfelt. It's incredibly emotional you know it's got a real base note of water the knight of cups is the mover of the water so it's got a lot to do with love it's got a lot to do with affection is what i'm getting here and this offer is supported by spirit because the ace of cups is the hand of the other so you can trust when met with this offer, and this could be to do, this could be to do with either your eighth house or your fifth house. You know, maybe it's a potential collaboration that's coming in, but it's somebody that sees your work and is moved by it in some way. Perhaps it's somebody in a in a more intimate sense, in a in a soul bond, a, a soul contract, a, a eighth house, sex and death kind of thing. That could be. I mean, it's the night, so you know, it's 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 a it's a vulnerable energy. It's a gentle energy. But it's being supported by spirit here, by that the ace. This offer is one that you can trust and one that you can rely on and one that's going to be really beneficial for you and something that you're entitled to, I think. There's a real message here that you're entitled to the pleasures of life. We have Jupiter in your fifth beaming down as you're working and processing and moving through all of these soul bonds, these contracts that have been so difficult to navigate at times there is this message of love. This could be somebody that's already in your life. They could be just, they could reach out to you at this Cancer New Moon. You know, I think everyone's thinking about their heart space at the moment. So there could be somebody that you are in partnership with now that tells them, tells you, shows you how much they love you. And spirit is really supporting this. This is the potential to level up and to really feel what it is to be in an honest, gentle, loving partnership. And let some of that Jupiter in, I think. Allow allow yourself some of your Sagittarius energy. You know, Sagittarius and Aries are blood brothers. There's something about your fire that we can hopefully reignite here in all of this water and waters you know it's a beautiful beautiful place you know it's our body is mostly water you know and that's that's how we that's how we feel that's how we are so moved by the moon is all of the water in our systems there's fire in you Sag we've got to remember that we need to maybe this magician this spark is something that's going to inspire you it's going you're going to remember who it is that you that you were and it's going to bring out a cosmic inspiration in you that's then you're going to balance this beautiful, gentle, empathic love with this fire, this passion. You know, there's something, you know, bring some of that fire into this love space. Experiment, see how it goes. Bring some of the love into the, the, the passion space. I think that as creative people, we are... It's our job to balance and to figure out how we can work with all of the different energies that 
that come and move through us. There's only fire and water on this spread. So this really is really talking to me about your fifth and eighth house, okay? So we're thinking, we're thinking creativity, we're thinking cute dates, cute sex, flirtation, all of that stuff. As you move through and call in some of this emotional release from these bonds that you have been incorporated in. There's the end of my sand. <laughs> well, that's the end of the reading then, Sagittarius. Uh, so much love to you. This is lovely. I hope that you really enjoy this one. This is for you. This is going to be really, really gorge. You're going to love, you're going to regenerate, you're going to call in and actively work with the planet, work with the earth, work with the elements around you. Be a little magician yourself, I suggest it. This is, there's a lot of you in here. Don't forget it. Um, you can head to umaruby.com if you'd like a private reading with me, uh, or you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and you can tip your little waitress if you feel like it. Uh, other than that, I will speak to you in two weeks at the full moon in Capricorn. Until then, take care. <laughs>